talked a great game. We gotta put it into action. Sell me this pillow. Oh my gosh. So many different ways I could sell you that pillow. Your interest for tech sales, man. For me, getting into sales was more of a competitive thing too as well. I said this on the last sales related podcast. Sales is the quickest track to the CEO seat. What do you think makes a good salesman? What's your dream company to do sales for? Like yeah. from Bahamas national team to yeah. credit card sales. Yeah. <laughs> so, credit I card mean, company sales. Does location matter for you? Probably want to do it in the city that's probably a million people. Yeah, you could do it from the Bahamas. Just, yeah. just don't do it from the FTX penthouse. Because <laughs> then people will be coming for you. Let's go, baby. It's another episode of the Athletes and Assets podcast. I'm your host, Noah Lack, and I bring on your favorite athletes to chat about a business topic. All-Star Weekend Edition, we got my man Aaron Gordon, Indiana high school basketball legend, Valparaiso, now playing for the Bahamas national team and has been playing professional basketball for a minute. But uh, we might chat a little tech sales today. But Aaron, thanks so much for joining the pod. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. you uh, clearly outdressed me, um, <laughs> looking like uh, a taller Cat Williams, freshly dressed. Uh, but let's skip the small talk. I need to know, one-on-one, -on -one, you versus Eric right now. Oh my God. Who's winning, what's the score? Like, how are we beating him? Because I think you're gonna say you, but I don't know, maybe you're not, maybe you can concede. Okay, so if we play one-on-one, -on -one, Eric would win, but I think the score right now would probably be, if we went to 11, I'd probably score like five. He, he's still a monster. Okay, so you're, you're giving him the nod. I'm, I'm giving him the nod. Now, now him in his prime now is, is, is looking pretty tough because okay. I think he would have, Eric in his prime would have been able to take a lot of dudes. What about Eric right now? I mean, you're still in your prime. Yeah. So you think, you still think you'd get to five, Eric would get to 11? Yeah. Okay. I mean, he's one of the most underrated players in NBA history. I, I agree. Yeah. I, I think, like, you know, I'm a Houston, I'm from Houston, you know, Eric was on the Rockets for a while. His ability to shoot, but then also like his strength. Oh, like, did yeah. you guys, do you guys have some secret like strength training mechanism, like method that we should you know about? Or our mother's from the Bahamas, so we get our strength from her. You know, it's so funny. We had an uncle that was like, he was like three hundred pounds, six foot six. He was built like LeBron James. Yeah. So. Um, we can definitely see like where we we got our size and strength from. Yeah, <laughs> I was like, do you have a what's your strength? Training regimen, be from the Baha grow to the Caribbean. <laughs> but yeah, I mean, my strength reg regimen is uh, pretty simple. Um, I would say, you know, I, I try to, you know, do some strength training, you know, four or five days out the week. Uh, nothing like too too crazy. I, I'm not a big like, you know, max out guy. Yeah, Just yeah. Continuous training, continuous exercise, and that's to me the best way to train off the court. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely, and. Um, you know, I, it seems like you've applied what you've learned on the court and your training ability to your interest for tech sales, man. Yeah. This is like, I like chatting about sales because it's always an easy conversation. Um, but like, why, first of all, why tech sales? Like what even, like what brought this up for you? Yeah, so there were a lot of different things that I've always been interested in outside of just basketball. But um, I originally first was really interested in UX design. Um, okay. For those of you who don't know UX design, UX design is pretty much like the user experience of how people feel using something. So for example, how do you guys feel like using your iPhone? How do you guys feel when you guys are, are you even using stuff like Adora, an escalator, like how does that work? And that's what UX designer really does. So yeah. I got really into that because, you know, we use stuff every single day. Like even like when we're going through a drive through, like how does the technology look to you from, from that distance? Like how are we solving problems? So um, that's where I really fell in love with it. And then I went to the NBA, um, you know, tech program, and then I was able to see, um, what are some of the best things to do, um, for, you know, just getting into tech and obviously being a UX designer and playing was probably not the best thing because when you're, you are a UX designer, you have to do so much. And I yeah. said, you know, that's going to be really hard to do during the season. So for the most part, I just say, okay, let me get into tech sales. Let's see how we can continue to do stuff by doing tech sales and I kind of just fell in love with tech sales. I think, first of all, the, when I think of UX design, um, websites, mm -hmm. right? Like now like me like sort of being in the tech world, yeah. I have this like really nerdy appreciation for like clean websites. Yeah. So especially when like a lot of athletes turn tech entrepreneurs like make websites, Yeah. I'm like looking at, is it easy to, to look at? Is, are there, is it easy click rate, like easy mm -hmm. to flip through pages? Um, so that's interesting how like you went from UX to sales. There's, like, yeah. Can you like bridge that gap a little bit? Like why? Like that's. So I I think the number one thing is it's, it's tech. 
And then I wanted a transferable skill. Okay. So the solving a problem was there. Sales is solving a problem. They need to get more sales. And then, you know, design is something that like I've never had great interest in, but I've had great interest in helping people navigate. Yeah. So for me, like I've always paid attention, like when stuff doesn't work, like when you're like Instagram feed is not working, like why is it not working? So I've always had that sort of feel. So for me, getting into sales was more of a competitive thing too as well. And yeah. then, you know, the best part about sales to me is it's a transferable skill. Yes. And that's one thing that you can be in tech sales, you can be in cor any sort of corporate sales, you can be in pharmaceuticals, it's all gonna work the same. So for me, sales to me is something that I think bridges the gap between all companies. And then, I mean, truth be told, you really don't even have to be a tech guy to even do tech sales. You can not know anything about yeah. the product. As long as you're somewhat passionate about it and you sell it, that's all you have to do. Yeah, I, 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 um, it, it's funny because, like you said, you don't have to know <laughs> that much going into it. But to be a good salesman, you really need to know the product. Um, and that's why I, th I think you're like the point is like I think sales is a really good bridge to learn about tech for a lot of athletes like yeah. like yourself because you're like damn like what is this B two B SaaS bullshit like I need yeah. to I need to really understand the product and then I can like sell it to people um, but that's awesome so the MBPA you got exposure from tech sales of that um, it's funny man because I think a lot of people are still sleeping on sales. Like you can yeah. make a lot of money from sales. Yeah, I mean, I was talking to, you know, some of the CEOs of some of those companies like Ramp and uh, the head of sales and with the with the uh, with Papa the the app where, you know, it, it, it's pretty much like the sales is what really drives a company. Yeah. And you know, without it, I mean it's not a company. So for me, if you're able to sell something, whether it could even be a, any sort of product, um, any sort of media, anything, you have to do that. So, I mean, moving up the corporate ladder, you have to have some sort of form of sales. And um, when you're able to sell something, that means it's an actual business. So, um, you, it just is so transferable. Bro, I tell, like, I tell everyone, I said this on the last sales-related podcast, sales is the quickest track to the CEO seat. Yeah. If you are bringing in the bacon, yeah. They ha you hold the power. Yeah. Um and especially at later stage companies and corporations. I I work with a lot of startups, like I'm around a lot of startups yeah. where you know, sometimes the sales guy is like just the founder. Yeah. But in big companies where like you need to like employ like deploy sales people yeah. and need to and it, it those guys can rise up really fast if you do it right. Really fast. You know what's something that's crazy? Like sometimes like the salespeople make more money than people above them. Yeah, above them, yeah. That's yeah. crazy. Yeah, I mean, the, the interesting part is like, I've always been a huge um, Shark Tank fan. Like me and my wife, we watch Shark Tank literally four to five times a week. Maybe even every single day. <laughs> who's, your, who's, your, uh, who's your favorite shark? I'm so biased, Mark Cuban. Mark Cuban's yeah, the, the I mean, shark. I do like Kevin O'Leary, but I would say Mark Cuban's probably my favorite. Kevin O'Leary always is charging the royalty. Yeah, man. yeah. <laughs> I mean, always royalties true. are always good, but <laughs> I'm, I'm definitely a guy who wants to be in it for the long run. So yeah. um, I do respect royalties, but I wouldn't be a royalty guy if <laughs> okay. I had that money. <laughs> okay. Um, but yeah, sorry, the, the, your, your Shark Tank point. Um, yeah, it's, I mean, that's founder-led sales right there. Yeah, and, the, and the, the one thing that they always talk about is like, what is sales? It always comes down, like, they can say all this X, Y, and Z it always comes down to what is sales, what is the time frame, how much can you guys, you know, fast track, how, you know what I'm saying, how, how is it, and that's what really makes the difference between you getting a deal, you're not getting a deal, how much you're going to invest, the percentage, and everything else is, you know, useless. I mean, they, a lot of times people talk about the logo and who's this, who's promoting, but there's no sales, it's like, yeah. there's no point in and and saying the rest of that stuff because it's got to be all about sales even if it's a bad logo bad endorsements all that stuff if it has sales that's all that matters so in your opinion like from your words for what you know what do you think makes a good salesman what makes a good salesman is somebody who can not only relay the product but people buy from people people don't buy from products so people buy especially when it comes to tech now obviously another thing is people buy from a brand and I think like, for example, I love Chick-fil-A. The reason why I love Chick-fil-A is I love not be, Chick -fil -A. I'll be honest, the reason why I love Chick-fil-A is because I know what I'm going to get every single time. Um, I know that the service is going to be good, even if there may be something that even tastes better. You know what I'm saying? It just, 
you know the consistency. So people buy brands and then people buy from people. People buy from people that they like. So um, that's to really, a, a good salesman is somebody who has a good brand and somebody that a lot of people like. Yeah, absolutely. I, I, and, I, and I think um, it's, it's more so qualifying than selling. Like I think a lot of great people in sales are, are very sharp and attentive to identifying who their audience is first before they start pitching people the product. Yeah. So it's like the funnel, right? You have this like giant funnel where you have all these like possible customers. Yeah. And then like you, you know, you build, uh, essentially build this funnel where like someone is maybe a better user or even more ideal user to where you're just qualifying whether they, you know, need your product or not. Yeah. Um, is that something that like you, you've, you've been taught that kind of funnel thing or you think about it in a different way? Interestingly enough, UX design taught me a little bit about that. And I know you're like, trust me, and this is going to sound crazy. So UX design, it, it pretty much brings people to a point where who's going to need this product? Who needs help with this product? Yes. So for example, if you're using a car and you're saying, okay, this car is with somebody who's wheelchair accessible. You know, a Ferrari's, you know, more than likely not wheelchair accessible, but maybe a van is. So who are you selling who are you selling uh, your your product to? How are you guys going to change it? What's the different avenues? And that's also selling too. So you yeah. also have to know the problem. And you always every business is figuring out a problem. Even media, like wh like what like why are you successful? Because people want to know. And the problem is people don't know that athletes, you know. What, what other ventures that they're doing. So guess what? They have your podcast, you know what I'm saying? And and that's where the, the, the problem lies. And with the podcast, it's a problem being solved. Yeah. So you can look at everything and say, that's the problem. How can it be solved? And that's the same thing with sales. Okay. Do you mind if we role play for a sec? Yeah, for sure. Let's do it. You've talked a great game. Yeah. Now we got we to put it into action. Sell me this pillow. Oh my gosh. There are so many different ways I could sell you that pillow. Oh my gosh, you're really gonna do this to be on the spot. Let's go right now. Sell sell some of the I'm a customer. I just walked into Bed Bath and Beyond and like I I might be looking for a pillow or a blanket, but you have a pill a small pillow. <laughs> okay, so there, number one, there's a million different ways I can go about this. But Well, there's only if I buy it, whatever way that is, that's a good one. That's a good one? Well, number one, I first wanna understand, hey, how how's it going? Hey, how's it going? What's your name? Noah. Noah, so what type of bed do you got? Do you have at home? I have a Casper. Yeah, very Casper, very very comfortable. It's like a Tempur Pedic. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. So, are you satisfied with it? Is that is your sleeping good? Because what what brings you in the store today? Yeah, I I um, some of my pillows been a little itchy. Um, I don't know if it's the cover or the um, the actual material inside the pillow. Um, but yeah, like the, the mattress is fine, but I, I do need something to like complement it, um, you know, in terms of, you know, where I'm laying my head. Well, you know, how does your significant other feel about, you know, a change in pillow? Uh, that's why I'm here. My significant other can't, can't stand me until we, we get a replacement. So, okay. So, I mean, one thing, you know, you may be tasked with that. So I think that this pillow right here will help get rid of your problems. Not only just your pillow problem, but the significant other problem. Damn. Okay. How so? What What's so amazing about what you have that? I There's no itching. Everything with this fabric will, will go right with your with your bed. Okay. Is it easy to like throw in the like putting the like the covers in the wash and like? Yep. It's going to be a lot easier, a lot simpler. I mean, obviously, <laughs> this is where the pitch would be a little bit different because like I don't because I don't have all the detail, but like, you know, that's where I would be going with it. So okay. so yeah, I mean, it would be very easy, much more simple. Uh, you and your significant other would love it. So I'm concerned on price, but don't want to sacrifice that for the quality and like what I'm looking for. Like, how would you compare the pricing of this to, like, maybe other pillows on the market? Okay, so like I said, the salesperson. That's the reason why you have to know your product, and you also have to know what other products are selling for. So if it's on par, I would say, well, this is on par, but trust me, your problems will go away just as soon. If it's if it's a higher price product, I would say, well. This is a little bit more higher price, but there's a reason for it. The okay. reason is because, obviously, like if we're just talking about this, so it's getting kind of hard now because now we're going. Let's to go, detail. man! Sell me the pillow. <laughs> <laughs> so, so it is higher price, but the thing is, is this will last you much much longer, as well as this will continue to be a good product and a good pillow for you. So it's worth the price because mm -hmm. at the end of the day, you'll end up saving money because 
you may have to get rid of a pillow, it may break down, and you'll end up buying more on top of that. So you'll end up saving money by buying this one that's a little bit more expensive. So there's like a longevity component here. Definitely, it's longevity in. as well. Okay, okay. And why should I, you know, try this one instead of going to like Bed Bath, like another Bed Bath and Beyond? Like what, what, you know, what, how long, how many, have you sold these before? Like what's your experience? See, so now, okay, so this is where <laughs> te- This is what I so, do. So I'll now I'm to the damn test, okay? You want to talk so sales, my, talk my, So here's the thing. In my head, I would need to know, but like I said, we're definitely role-playing. So what, what store am I at? See, because I think it would have been a little bit easier if you told me what store I was at. Um, what's a good, like, pillow store? Um, mattress firm. So mattress we're at mattress firm awesome. right now. All right. now and if now, you don't sell me this good. quickly, I'm going to bed, bath, All right, and let's beyond. Let's go. All right. <laughs> now we're good. Now we're now we're working. Well. Okay. So like I said, with here, we have these custom pillows that go directly with mattresses. So like I said, this will go directly with your mattress, and it's made for you. Go to bed, bath, and beyond. Those pillows are normally a little bit more made for whether it be couches, a lot of different things. This one is directly for your sleep, and you said that you were having sleep problems. So yes. That is where this will really enhance it. I'll, I'll, I'll purchase it, man. I'll do All right, it. Let's do it. I appreciate it. I yeah. appreciate it. Very exactly. good job. Good job. Good job. All right. Yeah, that was. Uh, I, you know, I had to put you to the That's test. That's pretty man. good. Yeah, yeah, I think. It, see, here's the thing. It's always easier when it comes to sales when you have a background of what you're selling. Because guess what? I believe if I was at Bed Bath and Beyond, I could still sell the same. You know, the same stuff but I would have to word everything differently. Yes. We'll see the prices this much less, even though you may get something that's a little more, you'll be able to save a hundred more versus if you're going somewhere else, we can get something a little bit. So you have to understand your product, what you're trying to sell, how you're trying to sell it. Yeah. So if you, I mean, you're going to play, for, you, you know, as long as you're going to play for, and I hope you play for 10, 10 15 years, whatever. Yeah. Like if you could do sales, What's your dream company to do sales for? Like, have you had conversations with companies? Like, what is... So it's so interesting. Like, I've seen guys who have done sales job while they're playing. So, you know, whether I play... Oh, uh, there's been a lot of guys like um, Norrence Norrence, uh, uh, Obedisi. Okay. He he did sales for Amazon and because he played for the Suns and then he played in the G League uh, with uh, Sewage Falls and somebody else and... Um, the Hornets too. So he played with them and he, he did sales while he played. So, um, you know, that's not something that I'm not sure if I would be willing to do, yeah, but, that's tough. um, but that is something that, you know, I'm gonna definitely keep my options open with, but, um, either way, I think going in, into sales would be really cool to do, whether it's towards the end of my career at the end or, or whatnot. It's like, oh, Aaron's been watching a lot of film lately. And it's like you yeah. like adjusting your CRM. Yeah. Like, <laughs> yeah. It's, it's like, so funny. A lot, that, a lot bro? of people, a lot of people, cause Norris would tell you, like he, he tells me this all the time. Like when he was going through the process of doing that, he would like be in between like shoot around. He'd be on the phone calling people, talking to people. So I learned a lot just from him. And uh, he's actually been a great mentor, even though he's like two or three years older than me. Yeah. Um, he's actually been a good mentor just because he's done that sort of stuff. Yeah. Uh, that's really cool. Um, what about, um, like, back to the, the company side. Mm-hmm. You know you mentioned Ramp. Yeah. You know, is, is that cozy for you? Is it, is it like, is it something that big or you want something smaller? That's like, let's a, manifest something here. Just, just put let's the hell manifest of something. Ramp would be pretty, pretty good. Um, I think it's, you know, that's still more up and coming with New York City. It's, you know, credit card company for businesses. So, I mean. Hell of a switch. Yeah, that from, is, yeah. From Bahamas national team to yeah. credit card sales. Yeah. <laughs> so, credit I card mean, company sales. I'll say this. The, the interesting part about that company, I feel like they are straight up hustlers. They, like, when I talk to those guys, they are, they're like, they're ready to move. They're ready to roll. Mm. Um, and then the company Papa. So that's really another one that really sparked my interest. So let me talk a little bit about that. So yeah. that one is more of a company that's made for, like if your grandmother or grandfather needed like a, a, like a personal assistant, they will hire somebody in the area, someone who's certified to go there and to run groceries for them, run errands for them, do certain things, clean up the house for them because maybe you, you can't do it or, you know, maybe you're out of town or whatnot and, you know, they had that service. So that's something that I thought was like really fun, cool and cozy, something yeah. that I could really, you know, like get behind. Yeah. Does location matter? Like, does location matter for you? In well, a sales I mean, role or could you do, weirdly you do enough, you know, tech sales, it's online. So yeah. 
like 95% is online. But I mean, I wouldn't, it, it really doesn't mind for me. I mean, I would definitely, honestly, I would definitely want to be in a, you know, a, a bigger city. Um, I probably wouldn't want to do it in a city of 50,000 people, but I yeah. would probably want to do it in a city that's probably a million people. Yeah, you could do it from the Bahamas. Just, yeah. just don't do it from the FTX penthouse. Because <laughs> then people will be coming for you. They'll be yeah. like, what are you exactly selling? And regardless of who you're working for, just stay away yeah. from uh, the, uh, the FTX penthouse. Yeah. Um, what, what, uh, so you mentioned um, the gentleman who has, you know, he has done sales while playing. Is there any other guys that like you've learned sales from that were hoopers or or who are your like mentors sort of like? So my father, this? my father did uh, pharmaceutical sales for twenty five plus years. Wow. So you know, and he was a district manager. So you know, I've learned a lot from him just being around him, uh, seeing the amount of road trips. I mean, obviously, the entire landscape of sales is different. It's a lot of phone calls, Zoom calls, um, more cozy, a lot of t shirts, pajamas in bed. Uh, my dad was a lot more. I'm on the road, you know, they paid for his gas. It was like, he was just going. So it's a lot different than it is now, but you know, I learned a lot from him. I would say him and Norris are, and it's interesting because Norris was able to just do it when he was on the road, so hustling and bustling. I mean, there's some salespeople um, that, you know, I just heard of that, you know, they're in a kind of a comfy sales job. So, yeah. um, you know, it, it, there's definitely different, you know, different ways. You know how I got like introduced to this concept of sales? How? The guy who sprayed the bottle, uh, who sprays the, like the cleaning bottle and like wipes it off. And he's like, you're gonna be wider than Michael Jackson's skin after, after <laughs> the, the, that's, you know that comedian? Yeah. That was like my, that was, that was, was like, like your intro to sales? Yeah, I mean, like, it was like yeah. my first time where I was like, okay, that is what sales is in a yeah. nutshell. I mean, it's a very extreme comedic yeah, yeah. example. But, like, do you remember that guy? Like, do, like was that something that... Uh, I don't remember that. Okay. Yeah. Okay. It was a commercial? No, it's this comedian who would go to door to door um, and sell his product. He was really good. He was actually sold a lot of these really? cleaning bottles, like cleaning um, product. Oh, that's awesome. Um, but he would, it was a joke every second. So he's like, he would just say all this crazy stuff. Anyways, like that was, um, you know, one of my, like, that was my introduction. Yeah. And I think, um, I think a lot of people think sales is super boring, but if you're killing it and making a lot of money and know the product, it's really not. Yeah. I think when, when people think about sales or, you know, they're thinking about somebody who goes into an office and just sits there and just cold calls people all day, but it can be awesome. I mean, and it's different. There's executive sales. Uh, they're like, for example, like even I was able to spend some time with people who do like corporate sales and, and, um, like sweet sales for like the Pacers. So like, yeah, you, you're able to go there and you're able to, you know, to talk to people who are billionaires, people who are athletes and you're able to talk to them and, and kind of explain to them, Hey, this is what we can offer you, yada, yada, yada. And to me, that's pretty interesting because now you're building not only relationships, but you're also building your own self like value because now you're building your network, you're building a ton of different things. So um, there's different, you know, you know, sales opportunities other than just sit there and cold call. Sometimes the sit there and cold calls are actually the ones who are making a ton of money, and sometimes the ones that are glamorous and and talking to Jay Z and Beyonce on. You know, sometimes they're the ones that don't make as much money, but overall, it's about you know you pushing yourself and and uh, and trying to sell that product. Like this is why I think athletes are like tailor made for sales. Yeah, because. We were talking earlier. You kind of set your own schedule. Yeah. Like you kind of like got to do your own thing. It's a bl it's a gift and a curse. Yeah. Like you slack off, you're out of there yeah, quicker you're than out you came very in. Very quick. But if you have that like discipline to be like, I'm gonna do this at this o'clock, this time, set my schedule this way. Man, it's just like you're hooping for you know uh, the Suns or something. Yeah. You know. Um. And like, h how have you talked to your other like teammates about? this like this sort of dynamic or is that is that like what other what other guys do you know are sort of on this wavelength or do you feel like you're a you're a fish out of water uh, i mean like i said norris is one of the only people but I, you know it's interesting i think everybody has their own thing um so for me personally like i do basketball clinics and stuff so obviously more people are going to probably be into that while they're playing than like tech sales but um you know i think everyone's into a lot of different things so we share what we do there's some guys that want to be you know rappers that are in it you know that are playing there's some guys that want to do you know venture capital there's some people that want to do you know other stuff so yeah um there's there's so many different things there's some people that are doing real estate like you know like terry you know there's just 
a lot of different people that are into a lot of different things. So I think Shout it's, out Terry Harris, by the way. Yeah, Shout I mean, yeah, because, you know, it's so interesting. So I'm not sure if I followed him or he followed me. And I just was like, wow, like he was doing all that. Like I said, he was doing all that while he was playing when yeah. he was first starting. So that's something that I, you know, that was another inspiration for me to, you know, reach out and to, to do a lot of other things. But, you know, somebody like Terry, somebody who guys like me who are ambitious, on things outside of basketball, you can still do it while you while you still play and continue to, you can really thrive while doing it too. Crazy, it's crazy. And obviously you can't probably do it for eight years, 10 no. years, but yeah, like, yeah, yeah. if you really wanna do something like that, you can. So we have the Aaron Gordon Basketball Clinic. Will we see an Aaron Gordon Sales Clinic? <laughs> Young athletes are going to be sales professionals. Yeah, I think that's something that, you know, once I get, you know, pretty established in my career, I definitely want to have like a, you know, a sales course. Cause, cause, like, that's one thing with me. I always want people to continue to climb and grow. Yeah. Um, like, for example, like before I got here, I was doing um, a, a, like a speaking event at the Bloom, um, Bloom Project at the Big Sister, I mean, Big Brother, Big Sister program. And, you know, I just really want to uplift the youth and just people that come behind me. Um, you know, I just want people that come behind me to be better because I feel like my brothers did a great job with me just helping me get to where I'm at. And so I really want people that are younger than me to get, you know, further than where I'm at and, you know, help, you know, achieve their goals. Just like that. Current Hooper, future sales professional, mm -hmm. Aaron Gordon. Thanks thank so much you, for joining the you, podcast. Thank you. Much appreciate. Much appreciate. It's been another great episode of the Athletes and Assets podcast. I'm your host, Noel Lack, and I bring on your favorite athletes to chat about a business topic today. We squeeze the juice <laughs> out of the ceiling of sales yeah. with uh, Aaron. Uh, so appreciate you joining. Thank you. Much.